Welcome to Pop Point o with Brian Chapman and John Key. Today is Thursday, June 15th, 2017. And believe it or not, this is a video podcast for the Mac Observer. I'm Brian Chaffin, Editor-in-Chief of TMO. And I'm John Key, your stinker-in-chief. <laughs> All right. That works. I almost kind of felt like we could do a mic drop on that. <laughs> There's nothing more to discuss, is there? Anyway, I'm glad we got you before you're vacationing. Um, yes, I am leaving for a couple of weeks. Um, this will be my last show for a couple of weeks. Are you going to have a Walt on to uh, guest host? We'll see if I can sucker someone. I mean, uh, entice someone as smart as you. <laughs> to to, to co-host. Um, it's, it's a low bar, my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll see how that works out. But yeah, I'll be uh, excited um, uh, for when you get back, and I hope you have a great time while you're away and uh, do fun stuff. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's uh, it's been a long time uh, in the works, and uh, I'm looking forward. Yeah, vacations are awesome. You know, um, I, my mom told me a long time ago, and it, it, I didn't appreciate when I was a kid, but I, I kind of appreciate more. You know you've been on an awesome vacation when you completely forget about the world you left behind, but mm. then you're kind of glad to come back home at the end. Uh, and it's like the coziest, what best kind of vacations. Yeah, it, it's worked like out that, that way for me. Your mileage may vary. Sure. No, I kind of like that, though. Yeah, kind of like that. But kind of, I mean, I like that. <laughs> anyway, I wish that for you. So you. Uh, three topics and we're lying, right? Um, kind of have an <laughs> iPad-ish review. Um, uh, then I have a rant about everyone sucking vis-a-vis uh, -vis a little more pointed uh, relative to the MacBook and iPad. Uh, we will have some... Uh, anyway... Uh, too much detail. iPad review two is the uh, some TV show talk, which we haven't done in too long of a time, and three uh, talking about a rumor with e ink keyboards that I'm starting right now. Um, All right, this, this sounds good. I can't, I, I can't wait. <laughs> All right, you dear. Um, so uh, the iPad review. I put out an article, and I guess we'll have a link in the show notes. Uh, uh, to that, but I got a new iPad Pro, and um, uh, the the new 12.9 inch one, and um, there's some interesting insights uh, for me at least uh, about it versus the previous 12.9 inch that came out in 2015. Walt has that one, so it brings me, I have to say, a disconcerting amount of joy to rag on his now old and slow iPad. Um, <laughs> I think it, I think it, it tells all kinds of bad things about me that I take so much joy in it, uh, but just as much joy that he takes in when he leapfrogs me. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, a few people ask uh, the screen's a little bit brighter, and that's fine. And there's the new True Tone stuff, which frankly I, I find annoying. Uh, and I'm sure if you're a graphic artist, you, you'll you'll have tears of joy that your color matching is better. Uh, I find it's just one more annoying uh, process in the background that changes the screen to be dingier. Um, I like the unrealistic, total, awesome shroud my face uh, in glaring blue hue um, uh, that the iPad normally uh, puts out. So uh, it's just as heavy, it seems. Uh, there's there's maybe um, um, a little bit more weight um, on mine because I got the cellular version and Walt doesn't get the cellular versions. But it's physically pretty much the, the same stuff. The, under the hood, there's the big difference. In the 120 hertz, I'm thinking about it. I wonder if it's 120 hertz as much as just more grunt now. Because I did a test, and there's a video that shows like me just going super Zorro with pens simultaneously on the old iPad and the new iPad. And you can see when you draw with the pencil, uh, it's much, well, much it, it, it feels much smoother when you write with the pencil on the new iPad and it's it's almost disconcertingly smooth it, it's 
I, I used to have these, uh, and I know you, you I, haven't had that, this. Which, that, 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 that sort of bothers me, that, that idea that it's too smooth. I mean, that, that seems like, that seems that seems uh, that seems like I want to start punching things. Is what that really seems like. I don't know why you would want to punch things, but it, it it's you cannot have too much of a good thing. So in that regard, it's just it's incredibly good, um, and it's incredibly tactile um, in the impression it gives you because it's so. Real and I and I think this is what a lot of people say. You know, it's funny. It's only a few uh, milliseconds faster in response than probably the previous iPad, but those few milliseconds, there, there's a threshold, like kind of the uncanny valley for 3D, right? Like when something becomes real enough that you don't notice that it's a 3D rendered thing and you don't get that weird thing. But if it's off by just enough, even though it's not that much, it dives you into this uncanny valley where you're creeped out. Like that doesn't look like a real human being. It looks like some kind of 3D render monster. Um, and it's the same thing here. Like it just crosses that threshold where before I would perceive a little bit of lag on Walt's, uh, iPad. And on this one, I just don't, and it doesn't matter how fast I zorro the pencil. It just seems to keep up. Um, and that how is this a problem. It's, it, it's not, <laughs> I, I don't know. Is it coming off like a problem? It, it's awesome. It, it's fantastic that it does this. Um, it, it, but it gives me this, it, I, I, it, this is, one of my many unique to me uh, <laughs> mental problems. But I, I used to use these awesome little, very fine felt pens, uh, and they're super wet. The tips are super wet. So if you get them breathe even close to the paper, the ink seems to jump off the, the felt tip and onto the paper, even if you didn't make contact with it. Like it's so instant in, in transfer. And the ink was always so smudgy that if you dared put your hand on the paper afterwards, it would smudge all over the place. It was just super wet ink. And you get that sensation when you're drawing with this on the, on the iPad that it's just, it's, it's, it's wet and light touches. It's, it's, oh, that, that's a whole different show topic at some point. But anyway, <laughs> it has this just incredible delicacy and instantaneousness that, uh, was a surprise to me again, considering I've, I've used the other one, uh, that it made that much. It, it, it was a psychological jump. It, 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 it vaulted some threshold where the instantaneousness of it is now just on a different level. I don't know if it, you know, if it, making it any faster in the future will do that, uh, to improve it or not, but, uh, anymore, uh, I suspect diminishing returns, but at this point it's fantastic and very, um, immediate. Uh, on on just how well it it it, it tracks on uh, on that. Um, the other thing was that under the uh, uh, everyone talks about the 120 hertz being uh, the reason why that's more liquid, and I really suspect that has more to do with the CPU grunt that's going on and the extra cores. Meaning, if the iPad's doing anything else, it's not being as distracted. I had other tasks going on in the background, and it was still super liquid. And I think the 120 hertz may help on some flash stutters, but I don't know if that actually helps the tracking. Everyone attributes it to that, and I did in my video, but after thinking about it a little bit more, I'm thinking it's, it's just got to do with the grunt. Um, this thing is just mighty. The the, the processing well, power well, on this is Phil incredible. Schiller said, uh, Phil Schiller said very specifically at Talk Show Live during WWDC and John Gruber's uh, Talk Show Live, that the refresh rate does double the re resolution of the pencil. Hmm. That's why. That's, that's why I didn't say anything. That's, I, that's why I didn't say anything about the fact you said something about it in in your video piece. It's because it comports with what Apple is saying. I'm just not sure why the cycle on the on the screen has anything to do with how fast the the machine can push where where the where it is. I get it's the same move. It, yeah, I get yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when 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 you're super zaroing it, maybe 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 maybe. Uh, but I think the the grunt has something to do with it too. Uh, but I could be anyway. It, it, it's it's way faster. The the I haven't seen anyone other than myself report this. The SSD in this thing is a huge speed up. It's like three hundred twenty plus percent faster on writes than the previous gen. 
uh, iPad and something like 40% faster on reads. It's, uh, it's basically around a gigabyte a second um, reads and I think it was close to 400 megabytes a second on writes, um, which most people are like, I don't give a darn because it's an iPad. But I'm, one of the things I'm looking forward to is using, uh, you can use, I guess, Dropbox and other things, but I'm going to use my Drobo to uh, cloud sync basically everything on my Mac onto the iPad. So it becomes kind of like a real, you know, pseudo-ish laptop um, that I can go around with. And I'm going to give it a, once once iOS 11 comes out, I'm going to give the file system a chance. And that may real in all the multi drag and drop gestures and stuff, I'm starting to be hopeful that this machine will let me do more heavy duty lifting and creation work uh, than I ever could before to take it to the next level. So I'm how kind much, of excited. How that. Much, like, uh, where where are you doing that? What do you mean? Where am I doing that? Where are you doing creation work? Oh, all on my Mac. I mean, um, I, I, I I generally it's probably eighty. Um, eh, say 75% at, at my big desktop and 25% on my laptop. Um, uh, I, just because I, I usually have the choice and I prefer the, the heavier metal. But when I'm traveling, I, I, I can work pretty decently on the laptop too. How about yourself? Um, yeah, I can. I'd rather gouge my eye out with a rusty spork. Uh, the then do what? Then work then on. Do, then 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 write on an iPad. I I can do it. Yeah. And I mean, I could I could do most of my day job at TMO with an iPad if I had to. But I would yeah, I'd definitely rather. I'd rather really just just re, just get in there, just you know, <laughs> just just like this rusty spork and just just you know, just, boop, just boop, pop pop. Just, <laughs> Pop it, pop it right out. I uh, well, I mean, just because you can do something doesn't mean it's reasonable. I mean, I I bet you I could get my old five twelve uh, E Mac. I had one twenty. <laughs> uh, uh, I I upgraded it to the five twelve E. I bet you I could do a lot of my work on that, but it doesn't mean I want to. Um, so. Uh, the question is, you know, is it going to become closer and closer to a laptop replacement? I think, I, I think it's getting there. It's for sure getting there, especially with iOS 11, and especially with the new, yes. with the new, uh, uh, you know, oomph in the in, in the new iPad Pro models. Yeah, I think you know. By the way, you were I let it go quiet uh, out of respect for you in front of Walter. Um, last hmm. week, but did but I, you were you were you were actually kind of wink wink nod nod very kind in in your about face about my um, um, uh, point that um, that the iPad was adopting more and more Mac stuff into it, and it's my long point where I said it's not a question of if, it's a question of when the the toaster fridge is going to happen. It's going to happen. You're going to have a device that's eventually going to have a mouse and a file system and touch. And I always said it, it's a question of not if, it's a question did, of wait, did, did you when think and with what recipe. Did you think that I wasn't, um, that I was too casual about the fact that I changed my mind? Because I changed my mind. You just, you changed my mind. Like, I mean, well, I, I, and I fessed changed up. The, you, you you change no no oh you're you're always good about that I I if I if I ever kid you about that it's it's pure kidding uh, I wish I wish frankly a lot more people were as pleasant as you are to debate because when you when you honestly see it another way you'll just say it that way and uh, as a matter of fact I I should I I look up to you to that and and uh, I fail more more than I should but I should give up and 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 and, and concede a point um, as 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 uh, gracefully as you do. Uh, well, thank but, you. That's uh, very kind of you. Uh, it, it's just true. Uh, but the uh, we didn't get into the whole toaster fridge thing, other than I, I I caught your your comment when you said said that, and I think it's a, well, what, it, what, it what, showed, did, what did I say that was wink wink not not what we were arguing about was I being point. a dick? <laughs> no, you weren't being a dick. Um, uh, you're just being yourself. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, no, you weren't. No, you, you weren't. But. You you can you can you conceded you gave me this wink to to this other topic and I don't remember whatever whatever we were arguing about that was last week I, I could kill us um, <laughs> uh, the 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 thing that that was interesting to me is 
we are going, uh, you know, I've been, I've been, I've been ranting this for a long time, which is it's going to happen. You're going to have a touch screen, uh, either the touch screen is going to come to the Mac or the Mac's going to come to the iPad or something. But the point is you're going to have a convergence device. Uh, everything that Tim Cook's been saying uh, about toaster fridges is, is full of shit. This is happening. Again, the question is what, when, by whom, and with what recipe actually succeeds. I don't know what that is, but maybe it's showing that the iPad is getting closer to this. I think only one mouse driver away. I think that the recipe, though, that Apple is showing us is that they're not going to bring Mac OS to iPad. Instead, they're they're going to bring they're going to bring the features from the Mac necessary to make it a productivity device. Which is really cool and interesting and fascinating to see how that develops. More so, and this nicely dovetails in the rant I had. <laughs> of fuck everybody more so because last year or actually in 2015 i did a benchmark uh on the macbook the 12 inch macbook uh versus the um, uh, then new ipad pro the 12.9 inch when it came out and it was for the first time ever that the ipad out benchmarked a mac yes it was the lowest then mac and everyone gave me grief like oh it's so unrealistic i wouldn't even uh, some dickheads major fucking dickheads that have their heads so far up their fucking ass that they're uh, they're like a perpetual fucking calm, motion machine calm. of eating shit calm all, down. all the time it'll be it'll be okay um, anyway uh told me how unrealistic it is despite the numbers showing what they showed you know it's not like i made up the benchmarks that's what they are and now everyone's going on about like oh the the this new one is faster than the macbooks when that already happened in 2015 that watershed moment happened uh, and now it's just happening even with greater uh, with greater might by the iPad. It's significantly more powerful. And now it's it's moved from the MacBook now up to beating some of the lower end MacBook Pros, which is kind of you know just shocking uh, that this little thin wafer thin mint um, is is just uh, outpacing um, uh, the the. Intel and Intel uh, should be embarrassed, and Apple's chip team should be super proud of themselves uh, for, yeah, they for the disparity. So, so let me ask you a question: Does this does this add fuel to the fire that Apple will ditch Intel for the Mac? Are are sure, there still I mean, comp- are there still computations that Intel's architecture does better than ARM? Well, obviously, at the higher end, um, yes. It's a, a, this is it's not real a real question, right? You know, Xeon will will smoke the crap out of uh, out of the 10x, uh, ch- the ARM, uh, the Apple 10x, a, a 10x chip. Uh, but um, you know, I don't know how long that lasts. At the, at the pace that we're going, I think in three years, if it continues at the slow glacial pace of non productivity and total shamefulness that Intel has been uh, putting out chips and in, in, increments and the crazy, almost, you know, parabolic uh, uh, rise in performance on Apple side, within three years, you've got a situation where Apple is, if not at, at parity or in excess of Intel, unless Intel steps up with their, their game and they've recently been forced to do so um, because AMD uh, finally is back in the game and really has embarrassed and humiliated uh, Intel. Not enough of the press is talking about that because the Intel top end Xeon has two cores more that they slap together. But if you want those two cores, then you can't have, you need a certain type of memory and you can't max out that memory and you only have 44 lane. It's it's the biggest Rube Goldberg pile of shit that they did in the last 10 minutes to just try to top the awesome design that is the AM, the new AMD chips um, that are fantastic. Uh, I, I personally hope that Intel gets hurt really bad, like like profoundly fucked in the ass, firing people that need to be fired for the shit production they've been doing and that AMD eats their lunch while pissing all over them. Uh, horrendous, sl- a lot of Apple's, in, injury uh, was to themselves, particularly on the Mac Pro, because it uses Xeons, which were updated regularly. But a lot of the lack, my 2011 piece of shit 17 inch MacBook Pro is basically on par with the latest uh, MacBook Pro. And that's a fucking embarrassment on Intel, not on Apple. 
Um, Fair hey, enough. Hey, Lars. Lars just joined. Hey, Lars. Boy. Hey, Rick. Um, anyway, uh, I think anyway, it, it's it's clearly still off from the high end. And as good as the video cards are compared to, say, the built-in graphics on the MacBook Pros, it's far off from an NVIDIA, you know, um, uh, mid-level card, much less high-end card. So, but Apple um, is is closing the gap there too. Yes, yes. Uh, it, I don't. Let me put it this way: the pace of the Delta, of the slow glacial pace of Intel, and the high pace of Apple within three years, they're they're dusting them in on in every way, right? On floating point, on 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 through on everything. The Delta. I think Apple is gaining on 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 um, on Nvidia, but it's only because Nvidia is like hitting laws of physics at this point, right? And it's not gaining as fast as it is on Intel. So I don't think like within three years you'll see an Apple iPad GPU competing with a mid-level GPU from Nvidia. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think I don't think it's just a, no, you're, a you're, completely different heat and power draw on those things. It's yeah, yeah, crazy. and and Nvidia Nvidia is making fast and huge strides on the GPU front, unlike right. Intel. Right. So um, anyway, uh, pe people of um, uh, people have been noticing that 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 huge, you know, it is it now got power to punch way above its weight. Uh, the new iPad. And um, there's one other rant. So it, it, it's, it feels great when you're drawing on it. it. Everything feels snappy, but you know the current iOS 10 is so kind of monotasking. The split window is kind of shitty and lame, frankly, and doesn't do much multitasking yep. worth of shit. Uh, but when you stress this, like when I had, um, when I used uh, some, some of the apps I launched that are real heavy and have to load a lot, like a big GPS app, um, uh, that I have with the maps that are on the on the device and whatnot, it really shines there. Like the the delta and the pop of the app versus the other one is is appreciable. And I think as we, when I load 400 gigs of data for work on this thing, and I'm loading and closing things all the time, the throughput of the drive and the multitasking ability of it to do several processes for drag and drop you'll really appreciate it because the throughput of the the new iPad is about double on video and multi-core. And I think that iOS 11 really is going to make use of that a lot more. Um, there is one negative about the new iPad I, I have, which is the power brick situation with this is totally fucked up. And it actually applies to the previous iPad as well. So um, it comes with a 12 watt brick. And that's fucking annoying because Every iPad brick you've ever had before that you installed all ar around your house and hid behind cabinets and stuff to wire in a pretty way mm -hmm, are all mm -hmm. 10 watt bricks, not 12. No, but, but that's cool, dude, because because it's clearly marked. <laughs> it looks identical. It's no, 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 no. I'm sure you're mistaken. I'm sure that I'm sure there's no way that Apple would actually ship uh, a, a power brick uh, that looks exactly the same as another power brick without clearly marking it. Yeah. Right, we're, yeah, we're, it, it's marked. I mean, it has a twelve instead of a ten, so that part is true. Where? But you have to look at it. Is it like on the it, on the little fine print? Yeah, it's that's uh, well, it's not, Okay, that's ridiculous. It, it's a bigger font than the fine print, but the point is, it, it it's it, on that same tiny label. Yes, it's on the label. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's unacceptable, man. So, you, know, so, I, hey, you know what? I got to do a plug. I got to do a plug right now. Okay, got to do a plug. If I had one of those i don't but if i did i would get air vinyls and i would put air vinyls on one or the, or, or the other or both to identify them so that i always could always could grab you know what i'm talking about have you seen air vinyls i i haven't uh lars boy is saying he uses a lab labeler to fix this and uh I, I haven't used air, air vinyls. Do you have one you could show on camera by chance? Uh, yes. I use this awesome labeler, Lars. I don't know if you've seen this. It's wireless. It's the LW600P, and it has this awesome app on your iPhone where you just type in whatever you want the message in, and it prints it out and pre-cuts it, and you get glow-in-the-dark ones. Uh, it has this little door and little cartridges that you just uh, – pull out and insert. They're not too expensive and they have a million and one different labels on this. 
awesome little labeler. All my cables are now labeled, and I'm going uh, to, I'm OCD gonna, parts of me are very the happy. By URL this. To, and you can maybe stick it up. Uh, I, I actually have some of these products here, and I don't know where they are because my desk is a mess. And uh, we have a video review coming, like in the next day or so, of the of this particular product. I met with a young man who's who's uh, the young the young engineer who is making these, and uh, it's a it's a it's a way to to personalize. You know, they're not designed to like personalize your AirPod cases, but first of all, they fit hmm. on a power brick perfectly. And second of all, they're actually very high quality. And if I needed to differentiate one from another, I would absolutely positively, positively do that. that. This is what well, I'd use to differentiate. I, I, look, I look forward to the review because <coughs> um, I'm really, normally I, I, I solve a lot of these problems by throwing stupid money at these things. Like, um, <laughs> Oh, my power brick problems for all the different, not just my MacBooks, uh, Walt's Mac when he comes over, uh, my girlfriend, it's just too many MacBooks, right? With too many different kinds of uh, uh, Mag, Mag 2, Mag, uh, Mag uh, what's it, MagSafe 1 and 2. Uh, so my solution, and, and different, you know, size laptops have a, a 45 watt, a 65 watt, an 85 watt thing. So my solution was just buy the MagSafe 1, 85 watt brick and put a little little strappy thing on that holds the mag safe one to two converter and they're all over the house but now anyone can walk up to this thing slap it in and not have to think about it like just <laughs> not having to think about it was worth whatever ridiculous price i overpaid for that right yeah that's stupid money well, and Apple's, of course, now fucked me in the ass royally on that too, because of course the USB-C you can't do that with, and now I'm probably gonna I'm gonna get the 87 watt adapter and put that everywhere and get like 13 dongles off the tip or whatever the solution is to that, which I don't even know. It, you, there is you, no solution. You, to it. you have problems, John. <laughs> Just saying. All right, Captain Obvious. <laughs> um, so, so. Um, but here, here's the problem. There is no optimal solution if you want to reduce clutter with the iPad because the the even if you're okay with the 12 watt and you were to go and change all your 10 watt adapters so that you're never underfeeding the new iPad juice and giving it what it wants, that's a five plus hour charge on the 12 watt adapter, which is fuck long time to charge anything, and because uh, it has a ginormous battery, but still, it's a long time. But the iPad is capable of fast charging. So you would think, all right, I'll just get the 87 watt thing, throw in a, a USB-C to lightning cable into it, and it'll have plenty of juice. But it can't. It can't cope with, they can't co coincide in it. And so you still get effectively a five hour charge off of the 87 watt adapter. What you need to do is find the 29 watt adapter for the MacBook, nothing, right? The, just the plain MacBook. And that will charge your iPad Pro in 90 minutes. It's crazy. Um, so anyway, uh, that is annoying. Like the, why the bigger power bricks are not capable of giving this the full charge is a kind of a shameful engineering design uh, on Apple's part. And I don't know, you know, what they were smoking that day. You know, why, the, why wouldn't they just include that? You said you you've used a 29 watt one. Is this correct? You personally. Right. Tested. Uh, well, I haven't. I, 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 no, I have not. I know people that have, and they told me that is the solution. Get the twenty-nine watt one. Wait, I just wait, wait, wait. how how finding this problem. How secondhand is this? How secondhand? It's secondhand. Is I mean, is it like you read it on the interwebs? Uh, I read it on the, on the interwebs, and a friend of mine that has an iPad Pro has confirmed it. He has the okay. twenty-nine watt right. one, and That's it and it and it charges fast. All right, that's what I needed to know. Um, it is bizarre to me that Apple wouldn't include a 29. E e either, the, either the iPad Pro is not supposed to accept that much power. No, it's designed for fast charge. <laughs> they they well, specifically mention they? the feature. I don't know. <laughs> that's the point. It's fucked. I, uh, that's, that's befuddling. It is befuddling. I agree. Uh uh, but overall, anyway, it's 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 a nice iPad. If you already have um, the 2015 iPad Pro, the 12 inch, I don't know if it's worth it. it Maybe if you're a super graphic artist, 
Uh, Jeff was telling me that it's not unrealistic, you know, to kind of shade in stuff. And he does that a lot. And he notices after he shades it for like 30 seconds or so that the lag creeps and increases on, mm. on, on his 12 inch. I tried, you know, scratching it as long as I could for like over a minute and it, whatever, it never stopped. It was just super liquidy, uh, goodness the entire time. So maybe for a graphic artist, but the, the rest of the improvements, the, the real telltale will be, unfortunately, I don't think anyone can test this yet is when iOS 11 comes out and you start working with multitasking, does the old one bog down a good bit? Um, versus the new one, um, and we will find out. I guess when you know, when it when it finally ships, uh, and we'll see. So it's hard to. I'd say hold your horses. If you have any iPad before that that's older than that, this is a this is a quantum leap up uh, uh, from that, and it's a it's a it's a pricey but a good upgrade with regard to performance. I suspect, and I don't know because I haven't I haven't. Um... I haven't personally tested it yet, but I suspect a slightly more compelling argument could be made from the original iPad Pro 9.7 inch to iPad Pro 10.5 inch. I'm sorry, say that again. A slightly more compelling case can be made to to upgrade from the it from the original iPad Pro the 9.7 inch model. Oh, to I the see. 2.5 inch simply because the, the, there is a there's a slight form factor difference. Uh, I think you're getting a lot more uh, bang for your buck on that one. But if iPad Pro 9.7 inches is doing for you, I can't imagine that you really need to. Yeah, uh, I mean, update. more screen is better, and it's the same, almost the exact same physical size. So I, I, I was jealous that why did they update the form factor for the 9.7 to the 10.5, and they didn't do it from the 12. They could have probably, you know, made the bezel small and, and made it like a 13. Yeah, I was surprised they didn't do that too. And I was also surprised when uh, I didn't catch this until you said it, John, that uh, it has the physical touch ID, ID button. Yeah, super annoying. Um, uh, why? I, I don't know why they would do that. And still no force, I, uh, no force touch on, on the iPads. Why? Yeah, I don't get that either. If you're going to make that, yeah. I, don't, I don't like that sort of, I don't like that fragmentation. That, yeah, not I've got touch ID. That's not fragmentation. The force touch is frag is fragmentation, or is it 3D touch? Force touch, 3D touch. Yeah. Whatever, whichever It's force one. touch. Uh, uh, 3D touch, I think, is on the watch. and for, They got to fucking just call it the same thing. Fuck them. Yes. Uh, it's all force touch. Uh, yeah, like on the on the trackpad. Yeah, trackpad. Yeah. I, I, I love force touch on the trackpad. It's awesome. awesome. And I've come to love the button on the uh, iPhone 7. I love it. I, I, I bitched about it being like a very meh. I didn't bitch about it. I said it was kind of meh when I started, and now I love it. And every time I use an old one, I'm like, what is this crank gear turned old style shit that I have to use? I have to depress this button like some kind of fucking animal instead of it just jumping up like a like a, a dog happy to see you and just greet you. Uh, as uh, Anyway, first world problem, but um, uh, I, I, it's just a bizarre you know, kind of weird omission. Uh, I can understand that. I could forgive them that there's no force touch on the screen. I don't. I can't. It, there's no reason for the for for the touch ID button not to be the haptic one because there, there there's no. It's the exact same fucking button they use in the iPhone Seven. There's nothing yep. that was difficult to implement there. Anyway. Um, yeah, Lars Boy is saying that you know no force touch on because the screen's too big for the magnet or whatever. I don't know what that means, but it's just basically it's a big fucking screen and it's probably a more difficult problem to solve. Which I I totally buy that, but the button is easy. I, I don't get that at all. Anyway, um, I think we've beaten that topic to death. I've had my little rant or Wait, two. Hold on. No, I I, <laughs> I hear a little bit of life in that horse. <laughs> don't know that we quite. Oh, there it goes. You're right. Turns out you're right. Uh, it's dead. The last gasp went away. All right. We haven't talked in a long time um, about any shows. So I thought, uh, one, spoiler alert for the following shows. We may have spoilers. So, yeah, be warned. Uh, I think we could talk about Gotham, Dark Matter, and Doctor Who, which we I think we're all up to date on. Um, and um, unless you have something else on it, Again, spoilers, if you're watching any of these and you're not up to date, you might want to skip past it. Well, you might want to skip the whole podcast for a whole slew of reasons, but in particular for these spoilers, you may want to skip past. Um, yes. Let me start with Doctor Who. Yes. I 
hated this motherfucking doctor when he first spawned into Everybody existence. hates the new doctor. Whenever there's a new doctor, everybody hates the new doctor because you want uh, the old doctor. I hated the previous doctor. I'm not going to... You didn't like... like co what? To I hate, loathe, bow tie. Uh, oh uh, my god, he was awesome. Biggest piece of shit doctor. Hate, oh my hate, god, hate. you were so Passion wrong. Passion of a thousand sons. He can't be punched enough in his face to satisfy me. You Fuck were him. so wrong. Matt Smith is fantastic, man. Horrible. He was fantastic. A old soul in a young body. He was he, he, blah, he, he blah, was blah. the master of the old man inside a young body, man. It was... No, it was he, he, he wasn't even a masturbator. He, he was a he piece went, of shit he and he sucked. from goofy to scary to powerful to insightful to caring he could just turn on a dime he was awesome you were god you like you, ah he couldn't ah. he he sucked badger dicks covered with porcupine spines in fucking maple syrup daily is how much that guy sucked Wait, hold and, on. Uh, and, Lars, and how tragically he sucked. Lars has something to say here. Uh, let me quote here. Uh, Matt Smith was great. Oh, yeah. It turns out that Lars is right. Yeah, I, let me tell you, I have a long list of things that Lars Boy has not been right about in his <laughs> life, and this is among them. Anyway, uh, fair-minded folks, I suppose, can can disagree with him. He was not to my taste. Uh, I, I like the guy that was before that I call hamster, which is uh, my stealing that phrase from... Uh, Top Gear, but he reminds me of Hamster from Top Gear, which is why I call him Hamster. I forget what his name was. He was a really good one, and the baldy guy before him I liked um, as well. Uh, kind of the first new doctor when they kind of re-kicked the show. He was pretty good, too, even though he was short-lived um, on that. <laughs> oh, Lars Boy, Sadie Face. I love you, Lars Boy. You're right. A very large amount of time. There you go. Um, so, um, but yeah, I didn't... Uh, David Tennant. When this guy... What, what's that? David Tennant, David Tennant was, was he, he the hamster he, guy? He was my favorite until Matt until about uh, I don't know half halfway oh, through the first season with Matt Smith. Yeah, uh, Matt Smith, whatever. Uh, also, I'm sure he's Karen a wonderful. Gillen was just amazing. So you know, mm. Karen Gillan, who was that one? She was the redhead. Yeah. She was the redhead companion. Uh, years she was. Uh, she was on the show for uh, years, dude. Oh, awesome. she was the one with the one that the boyfriend that waited for her for all eternity. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was, he was. Oh, I, my I, God. Oh, not no, a she big fan, fan of Corey. Despicable, but, but, unbearable, unpleasant. Amy Pond unpleasant. was amazing. Unpleasant human being. Um, anyway, God, uh, just, I, what's wrong me, with you? How do you, I mean, like, how do you, like, how do you get up? And like, I like, like every day you get up and you say, huh, I wonder what I'm going to hate about the world today. Because I, I woke up kind of in a good mood, but, you know, I really kind of, like, want to hate everything. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to go and f I'm going to go and fucking hate something. And so I'm going to pick something and I'm going to go hate it. What is it going to be? How, how could you not like Karen Gillum? She was amazing. So before we get to the substance of the, this horrible uh, actress, uh, <laughs> very fair and reasonable point about my general hatred to all things ever. Um, but I will to not to defend myself because I'm perfectly happy and satisfied with that that kind of descriptor about me. But um, uh, you nobody ever gives me credit when I say I really like this a lot. It it it, it it's slides because, by it's like water. It's so drowned you out say, by. Uh, well, was, that's a fair point. That's a fair <laughs> point. I, I I will I will give that. But I freely and and and, and many times have said I love that or that's fantastic or wo wooed about it and and people are just like well that's reasonable and normal we we'll, we'll, we won't we won't notice that but every negative thing about you we will notice. Okay, is that our problem, John, or does it possibly? Have I can't be a Pollyanna movie? fuck the whole time of my life. I'm okay, sorry. I'm in a fucking New York. Fuck. Do you see where the fuck I am? I'm not in Happyville, fucking San Francisco. <laughs> Fuck you in San Francisco. Like, I give a shit. There is, there is I'm from Pollyanna. fucking New York, and we have a tendency to say this is shit when this is a pile of shit. There and that fucking Pollyanna. doctor with the bow tie was a pile of shit, and there the bitch that followed around Poly was also a piece of shit. Oh my That's God, the way dude. it is. There's Pollyanna, and then there's, there's, there's like, you know, Mr. Willfully Optimistic. That's me. <laughs> Wait, no, I guess I'm over here. I'm over here, right? And then there's like like hate all of the world. And some there's like a little there's all this middle ground. There's this middle ground right here. You could you could you can't you say could... I hate all the world when there have been things that I've no noted that I liked a lot. Okay, that's Mr. Mostly Pedantic. Yeah, five you, you, well, you're right. There are at least five or six things that do not suck. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Um, but uh, so getting back to what started your you know derision towards me, which is always well placed, <laughs> um, was um, a, this doctor I thought was going to be another bow tie uh, doctor that I couldn't stand like the sight of. And that's why he started. And I think it was because uh, the actor was, I, I don't know his name either. Uh, Peter Capaldi. Uh, Deer? Peter. Oh, Capaldi. Peter. So Peter, uh, I think he was nervous and he was just overplaying whatever the lines. And it's understandable. It's, it's a pretty heavy role to kind of have batoned onto you. But this season, he just found his stride. That dude, and, and I feel bad because I was one of his haters. And I'm just, a, and from what I hear, he's not coming back next season. He's kind of a short-lived doctor from um, uh, from what's going to be renewed on him. And I feel bad because I think like some of my my vitriol and hate kind of made for the situation where once he he got to get going, he's done a great job. I really like him a lot. I think he's 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 an excellent doctor and an excellent carrier of the torch. Uh, his um, companions, the two new companions that he has, I forget their their names. Uh, Bill um, and uh, I forget what the uh, bald guy's name Bill. is. Bill. Bill's okay, which for me, by the way, that's super high praise because I, I love the companion. You, I shocked she's, it. I'm shocked that you like her. I didn't say I like her. I said she's okay. She's very in the meh category, but my considering my, my, I want to choke the life out of the asshole that, that cast most of the other companions, it, or, and, or, and, or, the writer that made them be such miserable, ungrateful pieces of shit of humanity um, uh, as they are written, it's high praise because I don't think I've ever liked a single companion. Oh, well, now with the exception, uh, with this exception too, his his uh, bald buddy, and it's not because he's bald, uh, uh, <laughs> who's very, 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 very comic relief. Uh, I don't know what his name is, but uh, he he's kind of very cute and funny, and I kind of like him. Um, he's, he's, he's a pleasant. He's a very fella. funny actor, I think. His 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 timing and his delivery is is uh, uh, is excellent. Um, but what I like about him, John, is that he goes from being goofy and you know, kind of like adorably affable to sort of being serious and scary and you know not not really quite scary but like suddenly you start thinking like oh wait a minute maybe this guy's a lot is a lot more serious than i thought he was i i think i know what you mean like he when, when he's particularly um guardian ish right about whatever the doctor's duties Nardle. are um Nardle anyway uh i i've been I've been enchanted and delighted. I went into this season uh, uh, like I do for many shows, hoping the death of everyone involved with the TV show. Um, and I was delighted. I was why really you, delighted. Why do you even watch? Because a lot of times the people that I want to die, die in the show. Oh, and there's so much schadenfreude from that, man. Oh, I can't tell you the, the, the sheer delight as they died. I'm like, and I'm like making sure it's not one of these, oh, they're just shot. In some, if they're not like shot in the head with the head exploding and then a truck running over them and then they're obliterating them pieces, I'm always w worried that the people I hate come back. But when they have those permadeaths, oh, I love it. Oh, please, can't get enough. But I don't feel that way at all. Actually, I feel the opposite. I feel bad that this is going to be his last season because he's done a phenomenal job. I really enjoyed it. I, I was, I, I, I couldn't have been more wrong about him, and um, I couldn't have. Um, been more wrong about my expectations. They, uh, I've really had a good time with, with Doctor Who this season. Uh, really good. Well, I'm, 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 I'm glad. I'm glad. Again, I kind of you like will, and you will wrong. never remember this conversation that I said something positive. You just remember all the negative and none of the the glowing uh, positivity that I gave. This. You're just I, like I'm, you're an evil piece of shit. I feel, <laughs> but I feel bad for you because I think that you actually are happier when you can hate it. Not oh no, not for TV shows. I, it's a very <laughs> fair, it's a very fair assumption you're shows. making because a lot about my character loves hate, <laughs> but not for TV shows. For TV shows, I do look for a lot of escapism, and when when it's done poorly or something is annoying or the character, I, I a lot of times you know what's funny is I feel sorry for the actors that play the role. Like almost every one of the companions that uh, I I loathe, uh, which is basically all of them. Um, when I see the interviews, for almost all of them, there is one exception, and I won't say which. Um, they're wonderful, charming people, and I'm just like the writers must hate 
like like why do they write them to be such loathsome selfish pieces of shit uh like hey by the way he fucking put you in a time machine he showed you the fucking wonders of the universe and you're acting like you're like smarter than this asshole that's lived for a billion years and given him attitude how about bringing it down a few notches and be a fucking little bit of humility you fucking piece of shits and almost every one of them are just these unbearable fucking pieces of shits of humanity. No, I, okay, all right, stop, stop. Because I can see you as an as a companion, and you would put all of them to shame for being a dick. I am a dick, but you you would be very surprised. I think um, I I went for a drive. Um, uh, I I very much am appreciative of my betters. And there are many, many people that fall into the category um, with, uh, with a friend of mine. And he's, he's like a good professional, a real professional driver. He, 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 he taught at racetracks and stuff like that. And I just shut the fuck up and do what I'm told um, because the person has a lot of knowledge. And afterwards, I don't know if I thanked him enough. I, th uh, I think he was almost embarrassed by how much I was thanking him. But I was very grateful um, to be educated hugely on um, just uh, the driving techniques that he showed and everything like that. I'm, um, it's, it's one of my pl genuine pleasures in life when someone that knows a lot more than me or is a lot more talented and capable than me, which again is a very broad pool to choose from, um, does me the kindness to show me or teach me something because um uh, they don't have to do that um uh, it's much easier to leave people ignorant and uh wallowing uh, so uh you would be wrong about it i mean if if there was a dude that was from a fucking different planet my first thing wouldn't be mm -mm -mm, you ain't all that it'd be like trying not to shit myself uh from just the fucking all first time you got into a situation where doctor who was doing something that's completely counterintuitive and you didn't understand it you'd be you'd be all like no i'd be like he's a fucking time traveler maybe the motherfucker knows a thing or know. two let me let me yeah quick, maybe quick poll here uh in the people that know you uh that have known you all your life who, who thinks that uh, john is being honest and who thinks that i got it right no, we, that, that's we, not we not have a delay. So we just won't. get get all the 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 opportunity to hate on me is is only going to bring exactly that. <laughs> that's not a, that's not a hey, scientifically you, accurate you re, poll. You reap what you sow, <laughs> sir. Well, that, that may be true too, but it doesn't get to the substance <laughs> of the truthiness in it or not. Anyway, um, excellent season. Um, I liked where it's going. Is it like a mid-season break right now? I think uh, with Doctor Who. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yes. they're on. Uh, so it's a good time to catch up if if you got a DVR or Netflix or whatever it, it's on. Um, it's on super BBC good America on here in the states. Uh, I don't think old ep old seasons are on Netflix. Oh yeah, so I don't. I think they are, but there may be a gap. Like I think they they have some deal with the BBC's online service. Oh, and there. there's there's some lag uh, on how they come yeah, across. Yeah, it's usually it's usually after the first uh, season, and right now they are showing they are showing details. They are showing. Oh come on, just give it to me. Streaming available in standard give definition. Give it to That's me. Awful. What you say? Standard give definition. It to me. What you Why say? would I watch it in standard definition? Like an animal. Wow. Anyway, it's on Netflix. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, uh, dude, I, I've seen some 4K video. I got this. I should do a review of it. I got this really nice LG OLED 65-inch um, screen. Uh, I don't know. It might be like half a year ago now. It was, no, during Christmas. Yeah, Jesus, time flies. During Christmas time. Do you want to review the remains of your lunch that's on the counter? Uh, is there? That's not. Oh, you know what this is? This isn't lunch. It's Play-Doh. It's a bucket of Play-Doh. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, it's that's a bucket of play-doh dude that is super cool and the reason i have a bucket of play-doh is i'm going to start a business uh I don't know, you, you know arvin from the tech group yeah. his kids want to want to start a business with me so i have a car that um needs a well i need a custom um, mount for my iphone in it because there is no spot that's really nice for it and so i i was trying to make a mold because his kids are like super awesome with uh 3d printing and they like teach their own uh teachers at school and stuff they are very capable of this and so I said hey you know what we can make a little business if we can make um, 
I don't know if you could see it, but it, it, anyway, it's a mold and an impression of um, of the two little insets in my car from which to make uh, a mold, put it in an iPhone, and I use Play-Doh. I'm sure there's something better to use with that, but I, I, I didn't think too long and hard about it, but that's what uh, update, it's not much. Update in the, the live chat, uh, one Jenny Taylor says that John would listen to the doctor, and Lars says, <laughs> uh, Jenny, you're too nice. So anyway, that's that's what the uh, that's what the family. Well, is like. yeah, J Jenny Jenny's view. Uh, bless her heart. Uh, she's my she, uh, that's my girlfriend. So oh, oh okay, I see. I prob see. Prob probably you know you have to lend it the proper weight because she may be a little biased towards me, and I appreciate that. It's very sweet. Uh, Lars has a bias completely in the other direction, so take it for it. It's worth there. Um, and he's a good friend, which again shows his bias in a very different way. Um, so um, anyway, I, I think that's enough uh, about Doctor Who. Uh, do you want to talk about Gotham or Dark Matter a little bit? Uh, you know, I, why, don't we, why don't we take a high-level uh, strafing run of both? Um, okay. Gotham has been amazing since season two. Season one was okay, but season two in season three was – season two was good, season three was great, and season four, amazing so far. So we, we, we mostly agree. We disagree a little bit. I kind of both, you'll see what I mean by I say, I agree and disagree with you about season one in that season one was kind of okay in the just more absolute view of good and not good. <laughs> it was, however, phenomenal with regard to a show doing its first season. And this is what I mean. If you ever watch yeah, a lot of first season shows, they have to give you so much backstory that they can't help but be horrible soap operas in the way that they talk to each other. Well, it's well, not, you know, it's Brian like Chaffin, my friend of uh, 19 years that we met on uh, together when doing articles uh, 12 years ago, I feel that I like you a lot as a friend. <laughs> I mean, it's, but it's, it's more than that too. It's 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 yeah. the rhythm. It's the uh, it's the people getting getting into their character. If you watch this first season of Friends, it feels plastic, jilted, and 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 you know, extraordinarily contrived. And you know, about the third season, you can tell that they're really fitting into the roles. For instance, and I agree with you about uh, Gotham was a little ham fisted at the first season, but relative to the most first season TV show starts. It was phenom, in my opinion, great. Sure. Uh, if you use if you use that relativistic standard that most first seasons are pretty crappy, it it was great. But uh, yeah, as a general season goes, it was very it was okay. I thought season two was the worst season. It wasn't terrible, but it was kind of just oh, like I thought, uh, I thought it was definitely maybe. better. Oh, that's interesting. So we disagree about that. I think it went kind of like from meh to ugh. and then season three was great, and season four was phenomenal and this is this is why season four is phenomenal and we've been pretty good i haven't don't think we've really given away any spoilers season four well this is a spoiler so definitely if you haven't seen season four don't do this uh slip by this because this is somewhat of a spoiler season four set you up to expect that the show was going to engage in every cliche that a tv show like this should and would and normally does and then didn't do it and it was yeah such yeah. Such a joy to see a show not wimp out into uh, into the cliches that you see in every other show. And I don't want to spoil it more than that, but really good. Uh, like season four, is, I think it had a couple of lulls, but overall my favorite season so far. I, I think there's a reason for this, John. I, I, I believe that Gotham. All right. So I got to go. I got to step back. Um, are you a Buffy fan? Uh, it's one of those shows I've saved for myself. I haven't seen a single thing, so don't spoil it for me, please. Okay. I, I do plan on watching. I, I will say that without spoiling anything, um, that Joss Whedon rewrote a lot of rules for television. Uh, one of the rules that he rewrote is that it's okay for characters to die. Uh, yeah, one of his one of his little things that he said in, in a behind the scenes interview was that um, I don't give you what you want; I give you what you need. Which is just so <laughs> so arrogant. I love it. I just love it, and um, and he's right. I mean, he's just so right about that. And you've got people like J.J. Abrams who are so highly acclaimed, and that, and that 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 fucker can't kill anybody to save his life. And it drives it drives me. It, I hate that. I hate that. 
So anyway, that's one of the things that Joss Whedon did. Another thing that Joss, you know, I get, I get ragged on that. I'm so negative. And yet here you are voting for the demise and death. Okay, dude, dude, dude. Just saying there's a little bit of a double standard. We have the whole body of evidence. We have the whole body of evidence (laughs) of you versus me. I think, I, I think I, I, okay. So here's another thing that Joss Whedon did. Joss Whedon had season line, season wide story arcs and series wide story arcs right and character arcs and you know he all this stuff is was planned out the first five seasons of of firefly were 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 planned before they ever filmed an episode uh buffy was uh, i don't think it was the first five seasons of buffy was planned but he certainly had a multi-season arc planned for Buffy. And so what that allows you to do, it allows you, it gives you consistency. It'll, it gives you the time and the room and the breadth to, to, to develop characters, to develop, uh, uh, to the plot points, uh, all these things. You like know, that. what's a lot like that. Um, if, if you haven't checked it out, it's worth checking out. Um, the flash. I, yeah, I can't right. stand. And I, and I, and I still, uh, shake my fist is a kind way to put it against, um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and uh, the other one, D.C., Legends, whatever. Oh, atrocious. A show has to be pretty bad when I, I even stop watching for uh, the hope of characters dying because I can't take it anymore. And those shows <laughs> fall in that category where I just stop watching. But Flash is – if if you had that reaction to those two shows, you should still give Flash a chance because it's very different. And it has a lot of exactly what you said. And there's great character development because there are all these over overlaid – arcs funny enough agents of shield is a is a josh a joss show uh but that's we're gonna leave that um alone i believe that gotham has been managed in the same way i think they've got story long arcs season-wide long arcs that they're planning to tell and that they've already decided what those arcs are going to be and i think that that is contributing directly to the the avoidance of cliches and and some of the other things that you've spoken to uh, as to why you like the show um, who's the guy that plays Penguin? Because that guy deserves a fucking Emmy. He's he's incredible. So, so uh, the guy that uh, plays, plays the Riddler. I think he steals every, every scene he's in. Uh, not when it's with. For me, it's not when he's in there with Oswald. I think Oswald is that act. I don't know if that actor is that great in general, or if this was the role he was meant to play. He's for me incredible. He is just phenomenal. And I've never been a Penguin fan. Like, in, I mean, I didn't dislike him, but it, his it, name is Robin just, Lord Taylor. Well, Robert like Taylor. Robin kudos, Lord Taylor. Uh, good, kudos to him. Uh, phenomenal. I, I, I can't say enough good things uh, about him. He, he's really made that character just a joy for me to, to enjoy what he's going to do next. Uh, I really like it. Uh, and you're right. Uh, I, I don't mean to take any, uh, the, the guy that plays the Riddler does a really good job too. You're right. Uh, but for me, for whatever reason, it's just anytime Oswald's in the scene, he just, he's, he's good. It. He's, uh, yeah, well, I think we may view each of them the same way, but separately a and little bit. Yeah. I, I get, I get where you're coming from. He, he's good. And uh, the guy that plays the Riddler is a Corey Michael Smith. Nice. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's great, man. Yeah, anyway, uh, re- really good. Uh, I think the fourth season has set a really high bar. I'm almost like afraid to watch the fifth because it's it's such a high bar uh, f- uh, for them, and I, and I just I'm, I'm fearful they'll they'll fall into the old you know TV show cliches. But so far they've they've really done a great job. So kudos to them on that. Uh, so we kept that high level, right? And mm-hmm. uh, dark dark matter. Um, uh, I guess we should give so the other two shows. We didn't have to give any bit of the premise. Should we give at least a little intro premise to what Dark Matter is about? Yeah, no, I think surely Gar- Dark Matter is is the least watched show that we've discussed. So uh, if you don't know what Doctor Who is or Gotham, kind of from the Batman saga, I mean, uh, we can't really help you. Uh, you should, you know, kudos to you having uh, so much of a life that's rich and fulfilled that you don't know kind of pop culture. Um, Dark Matter, on the other hand, it's uh, I don't know if there's a book or whatnot uh, uh, based on it, but the, the high-level premise of the show is you got these five five people that wake up uh, out of like uh, hibernation pods and they have no memory of themselves. And they start kind of 
figuring out who they are and they're kind of intense characters and this is a space <laughs> saga you know SWAT, uh, kind of star wars where everyone is han solo kind of uh world and um they start figuring out who they are some people really good and nice some people not so good and nice but you know it gets into really nice themes of who are you like the do your who you were mean who you are and are there well, anyway, I won't I won't get into it because it starts to sound more melodramatic than it is because it's it's a it's a cool uh, straight up uh, sci-fi show and it introduces some really interesting sci-fi concepts that I haven't seen before. Like I love the again spoilers alert, but uh, the like the clones. I like the whole clone the the teleclone uh, yep. concept that they have uh, in the show is very cool. Um, uh, they, <laughs> and just send them in and as long as uh and if your clone dies you don't care but uh, other than you lose the knowledge that that, that your clone might have otherwise brought back to you um really kind of uh anyway it's a good sci-fi uh show season one uh just kind of to to do the graph of season are we up to i think season four for this show right three three oh, so it's a third and the highest season one for me was kind of strong season two was kind of downish a little bit season three uh was kind of uppish uh, uh it, it started uh, uppish started. Uh, yeah, it, it, it started uppish for me a bit like it's got me more jazz than how i left off on season two but i like the overall premise it, it's actually um there there's i have the kind of um enthusiasm for this show the character development that i had for firefly there's a lot of room for these characters to to breathe and expand and become robust. And it's only a question of, you know, will they or won't they? Um, but it, there was just like when I was watching Firefly for the first time, I'm like, oh, this couldn't be so great, <laughs> right? And then, of course, it was canceled. I want to like I like it, but I want to like it a lot more than I do. Like, I feel like I'm, I like I'm so excited by it. And then... And then I watch it and I'm kind of, you know, it's like, eh. And, and I definitely find myself multitasking a lot more when I'm watching it. And, and here's the deal. All right. Here's, here's like, here's one of my dark sides, John. I love Canada. I love Canadians. How is that dark? <laughs> it's like saying I like maple syrup. I'm like, all right. The, sometimes that show feels too Canadian. The actors feel <laughs> too Canadian. It's like they're too nice. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah, is, I did not is, see that one coming. This is, this I did is not my, see this that. Is like, I, this is like the weirdest bias uh, you can possibly uh, imagine. I mean, it's filled in Vancouver. It's you know a lot of a lot of sci-fi shows. There's been shows. some evil shit in this show. How is it? All right. Uh, first of all, Lars Lars Boy is asking uh, where are we watching. I'm watching it just on Sci-Fi, and it's yeah, you know, my TiVo's yeah, capturing TiVo. it. Um, you, you, I don't know if it's, I'm guessing it's, it's on Netflix or Hulu or one of the other many on demand places you can get it from. Um, wow. I mean, there's been some like, all right, this last car, uh, the, the, the character that's kind of, you know, becoming again, spoilers flash by this, the, uh, that's becoming emperor. He's done some evil shit here, man. He's not very Canadian uh, of him. He, he, <laughs> He wasn't the, saying the, sorry, sorry, the, sorry. <laughs> the young woman, the young woman feels very Canadian to me. I, I, I actually, I mean, like, I, I can't. I, I love Canadians. They are the best freaking people. They're so much better than we are, and yeah, and, and, and and I don't know. It's like super, same thing with like Supernatural. I love Supernatural. It's one of my guilty pleasures. Um, but goodness gracious, do do a lot of the uh, characters feel Canadian? Which the only problem being is it's supposed to be set in the U.S. Dark Matter is not set in the U.S., so you know everybody in the future could all be from Canada, and that's perfectly fine. Right? Maybe Canada won the war. And like, uh, I, I, like, we like, haven't on, given that back back history on super on Supernatural. It's amazing <laughs> how many towering redwoods there are in Nebraska. <laughs> Nebraska, known for corn and redwoods. Yeah, little exactly. known fact. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it's your but bias. I, there is. <laughs> I mean, I do like, like, I, I know that you're, I've been teasing you because you were talking about how much you love Android and I'm trying to pretend that you're talking. Oh, about oh, oh, I love Android. Android is the bestest character ever. Oh my God. I love Android. Why? Okay. So, and I've been trying I to, I, I've, I love I've been having that character's written. Love. Them. I have been having mwah, 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 mwah. a lovely, wonderful, delightful time pretending 
that you're talking about the operating system. I love Android so much that I don't care that you will use this I know to mock you me that I like Android. That's how much I love Android. You haven't She's risen awesome. to the bait once, and which is just amazing to me. Look, uh, there's a few things I love deeply in this world. I love America. I love my girlfriend. I love my mom. I love a few of my friends. And I love me some Android. God damn, I love that character. What Android, do you like about her? She feels wooden. To I me. don't That's know. Wooden. It might be totally peculiar to me. I used to love data. I love data. I loved it. On, on Star Trek. Data. Love, was, love, data love, 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 love. I love the Brit quirky way he amazing. played him. Love the quirky way he played him. I love the somehow, you know, he, he obviously overplayed some emotion on it, but it was good. It was yeah, it always it was cartoony, but it was good and right. And it was just the sentiment and the personality of the character. And I don't know that maybe that guy kills puppies at home. The actor, I have no, no, nothing about him, but I love the character. And the same Actually, thing I with, think with people this speak character. Well uh, I, I mean, maybe a saint among men too, but point is, I don't know anything about his underlying personality. I love the way he played that character. And I love the way whoever this actress is plays uh, Android. Love it. Love it. My favorite thing about the show by far. And, and maybe I maybe like, my love of Android has skewed my love of the show. I, I really cop that that may be the case. I feel if like they kill Android, wouldn't. I will be devastated. <laughs> Let me say this, damn it. <laughs> I feel like she still wouldn't, but at the same time, that actually may be what she's going for. She's a fucking Android. Of course she's wooden. <laughs> How is she more? This is an interesting question. Is was data less wooden? Yes. Uh, interesting. I don't but know about that. I, I, I don't know. I'm probably, about that. I'm probably, I'm probably, this is probably this you might probably, just not like her, which is fair enough. I don't judge you on that. No, I, I, I do I, like the character and, and the actress is extremely talented. Um, I, I definitely, yeah, no, no, no biases. There. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I definitely like the uh, lead number one. I guess she's just one. I think, I think she's fantastic. I like the, I like right. the, the, uh, the uh, gosh, was it number two that died? Oops. Damn it. Spoiler you warned about spoilers like crazy. Uh, no, it was one that died. No, nope, one was wait, wasn't one her? No, one's the dude. Remember the dude, the the first guy, he, he had the twin, the, the yeah, the, right, the doppelganger guy. Yeah, that was number one. I that, was one. that was number two. What is she? Well, then what is who's the leader? Is she number two? I think she's five. Or she I can't five. keep the number straight. Yeah, she might be five. Dark matter. If only we had a way of, of connecting to some sort of these, some of these theory. things are impossible to verify, Brian. Of data, of, of information. Uh, so the actress's name is Portia Lynn. <laughs> her character's name. I'm, I'm sorry. Is... I'm, I'm reading the comments from Joey. I think he loves Android. <laughs> <laughs> and then Lars Boy is like, I think I've drawn that conclusion too. Uh, Delightful oh, mastery of the subtle. I can't. Oh, her, okay. uh, Lars Boy said she's two. Her name is two. She's yes. Two. She, and the Thank fellow you. who is. Dead. I I really like Marcus Boone, by the way, uh, who plays number. He plays. Uh, why are they making this so hard? Number three, Titch. Three. I like him. He's great. He's fantastic. I don't remember Titch. Was... And then the uh, I, Derek, I like him. Derek Moss was, as you said, was number was one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like them all. They're all good. I like the rascally guy. I like the kind of guy that now feels a little bit bad about some of his actions. He's, he seems like a nice fella. That's the fella I'm talking uh, about. Yeah, like yeah, him. he's good. I like uh, they're all they're all nice. I, I I don't know if their chemistry is fully congealed. It, it, yeah, I would, don't. I agree with that. I agree with that. They don't. They don't have like the like. If I start comparing this to Gotham, things are going to go south. Except for fucking Android. She's awesome. Um. Um. Yeah, you know that that's a higher standard to get, to get that pitter better. But I, I, I'm still excited about the show. I like, I do enjoy it. It is not, and you have an interesting measure that I do too. Is this the kind of show that demands my attention and I must watch? Like Game of Thrones, I can't watch that like while I'm you know tweeting or whatever. I have to like it's on my TV, um, and I'm focused on it. And for me, this is a show that I do focus on. But it's funny, like Jenny, the few times that she'll watch it with me, I think she's like like probably cooking or something on the side it's it's not that kind of show for for me so it just depends on that and some shows demand your attention because you can't track it otherwise but it's not necessarily that i want to uh do that and uh although we, we're not really going to get into it i don't think you've you've read the books but not the show the expanse the expanse is a show by the way if you I haven't haven't watched or read 
It's horrible season one. It's but it's one of those. Nor- it's it's ten times worse a normal season one because apparently there's like fifteen books or something about the expanse, and they had to overload season one with so much backstory. It was painful. It got much better in season two and three. So it might be worth a chance if if you've suffered through season one and you're like I'm done with that. It it got a lot better, but there was just an overload of backstory on that. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, I think I think. Uh, I think we've killed that. So, yep. uh, and I pro- and uh, I, I, wish I have make one the last topic short. Yes. Well, it will be short because it's just a rumor that I'm starting. <laughs> I have no substantiation for this rumor at all, other than my general pissiness, which would be the source of many rumors if that were the only standard. But it's my mm-hmm. general pissiness plus uh, one other piece of information. So, I don't know if you, you I've see, uh, if you've read some of the rumors about the new. Uh, the next MacBook Pro. Now, the, we had just one that was released um, uh, a little while ago for 2017. The rumors are that there may be a more substantial MacBook Pro in 2018, and one of its signature features is supposed to be the Saunders keyboard. Now, if you Google, so- actually, I could just show it. If you Google Saunders keyboard, here, let me, let me. We have technology to do this, so why, why not actually do this? Here's my desktop. And for the record, it's the Sonder keyboard. The Sonder. Uh, I am sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, so this keyboard looks a lot like an Apple keyboard. And w- without a few pedantic uh, people's uh, quibbles about the depth of the e-ink, it's, it's got an e-ink backing store. So a lot like the touch bar gives you almost any key, here each key has a little mini display in e-ink. So it's very low uh, power. But it could change to anything you want. So you could make like a gaming keyboard. You could do different languages. You can make it uh, Photoshop keys that they show here. I Cordy pre-ordered or, it. Or uh, yep. Dvorak. Uh, Dvorak, yep. Or, or whatever. Or whatever. Um, I ordered this, pre-ordered this uh, in January of 2016. Um, and it's still vapor. So now I'm putting two and two together. And that there's been talk that Apple may have been working with these guys, maybe licensing this. And I'm starting to suspect they may have been bought out by Apple quietly. And they're keeping this little ruse that, you know, they're still going to ship these keyboards out, but that these fellows are full in at work uh, doing um, basically the next uh, MacBook Pro keyboard that will have this e-ink feature, which would be pretty darn cool as long as they still have good feel on the, on the throws. Um, and there is some precedent for this, uh, although it's a little bit different than last time. And the precedent was, if you remember back, I guess this was in the late, mid to late 90s, Apple bought uh, a company called Fingerworks, and Fingerworks actually had a shipping product, and it was a, a keyboard replacement for your Mac, uh, well, back then, PowerBook, that let you do multi-touch gestures. It was, um, there was no screen or anything, but it was just a, a kind of a touchpad surface with pre-printed key areas, but you could do three, four finger swipes and all kinds of things on that. Apple bought that company, Fingerworks, and Fingerworks, the team that they got through that acquisition was uh, a big part of the iPhone's final multi-touch, multi-touch. team yep. that they did. It was years, years later, but n- nonetheless, uh, a lot of that tech did go somewhere. So uh, what happened when when they were bought out is the, the site just kind of died and, 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 and went stale. And at some point it was announced and, and everybody knew it was dead. And here the site isn't quite dead. But my th- thinking is, you know, we're, we're, we're a good 20 years out. They, they can keep up the web page and keep up the forest even if they were bought out if they're trying to keep this secret-ish for a while. So I'm throwing that out as a potential rumor that they may have been bought out uh, oh, here, if that here, rumor comes to here's pass. Here's my problem uh, with, the, with your rumor. I like your reasoning, but... It is still available for pre-order right now. Listen, I got my and pre-order it says, in. I'm still waiting. I know you got your pre-order in, but if Apple has bought the company, I don't think it. This, which isn't to say that Apple isn't working with them. They may or may not be working with them. But if Apple had bought the company, it would not be available for pre-order. 
Oh, I don't think so. Uh, many times these companies have been bought out and uh, canceled orders. And I believe uh, Fingerworks, uh, a lot of people that had orders in for them ended up having their orders canceled and refunded. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm not saying that, the, but, but, but the ability to pre-order is pulled from the site. The second, the second uh, more, well, maybe. I don't know. Actually, against, I, let me, let me, let me actually argue. Yeah, myself. you make a good point. I, I, no, I see Siri, point. Siri stayed on the app store. For a long time, yeah. the Siri app. Yeah, yeah, and maybe they'll ship this and it'll have an Apple logo on it, right? Um, uh, who knows? But no, it's an excellent point, and it's Rumorville. And actually, this isn't even Rumorville. This is my Conjureville, right? So Spe uh, speculationville. I mean, it's good reasoning. I, I like, I like the reasoning. I, I actually don't like the fact that it's taken this long to ship. That doesn't actually speak too well of the technology. And and then I have I have I mean. I, you you properly chastised me before we started recording that I was getting hung up on some uh, aspects of the prototype. Um, um, there, there's no way that what they're showing as a prototype is is near enough good quality for for Apple to ship. But then again, it, it that keyboard probably isn't going to ship at all. It would be incorporated into another product. Period. Yeah. You know, and, and you had a good criticism of it, which is yeah, the depth of the the e ink is a little far and it kind of like almost disorienting, uh, especially since they, I, I didn't understand this decision on their part, except for maybe the space bar, but for all the other keys, why not make them e ink as well? Right. Cause especially the function keys and stuff seem naturals to have yeah, weird modifiers on them. And that would fix that. Yeah. I think Apple would fix that. Uh, but nevertheless, anyway, some, some, uh, rumor -ish speculation for your pleasure or not. It's definitely, and, it's definitely fun. I mean, I like where you're going with it. I do like where you're going with it. I just, yeah. I'd love it. it, it it's a natural compliment to the touch bar, right? To have even more pro modificationable keys and stuff like that. I right. would use the heck out of it. I love keyboard maestro, by the way, if, if, uh, if you're looking for a replacement for quick keys, which is showing how old I am. Well, other than seeing how old I am, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, but keyboard I maestro is great for, for, for doing macros and stuff. Um, but it, uh, you know, you could do a lot if you're into that kind of thing, having a keyboard like this would be pretty spiffy rock and roll, man. All right, my friend, thank you very much for joining me and thank all our, our viewers for, for joining us and for, yeah, their, thanks for their, everybody that, uh, chimed they're in. nice and con kind comments, except for you, Lars boy. Uh, <laughs> for, for, for joining us. And um, with that, I'll say uh, see you next time, uh, Brian, and I uh, hope you have a good vacation. Thanks, brother. All right. And with that, we'll see you on another popular topic next time. Mm -hmm.